hello everybody um this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create bullets and um I'm kind of sick so if it, the volume is kind of quieter if I sound kind of bad or I cough or something you know why it's really sick so anyways I already made the program so I'm going to show you what the end result is so it's basically nothing and when I click the Z key when I click the Z key it basically just makes circles and it's basically just moves in the direction to show how you can like create a bullet animation now you see you seen them all, all of them shooting at once um you probably know how to make a one bullet shoot across the screen and then shoot the next one but you might not know how to create multiple bullets so I want to teach you how to do it so what I have here is first I created my two variables and the integer types and the BX um, basically stands for bullet X and this is for bullet Y and the re I made it an array of a thousand. Now it's better if you could use vectors, but in most beginner tutorials do not teach vectors, so I'm not gonna show you the vectors way because you probably don't know it, but you guys know what arrays are, so it's better to teach arrays. So I set it to a thousand. That means the maximum bullets they can shoot is a thousand bullets before an error occurs, but you can make this larger uh, in the future or something or you can reset the value once it becomes to a thousand <coughs> sorry <clears throat> but let's make it a thousand for now so I also made a counter now this is gonna count to see which bullet number we're at so it's the bullets signature or whatever to make sure which bullet we're at now this is a for loop and basically I'm just setting a value for all um, the values in the array just for default value obviously they're gonna change but this is just a default value right so for sorry so for all um, the bullets they're all gonna start at 10 in the X variables and they're all gonna start at 10 from the Y variables, right? And you should always set a default for that. Now I have my, and it goes from. I should go back to this. It goes from I less than or equal to 999. Cause remember, the arrays. If you cut a thousand, the maximum array is gonna be BX um 999. Remember, because the array started at zero. If you really don't know what I am saying, then go back to your beginner tutorials and learn about arrays. Now, um, now to my while loop. So we have a basic while loop from my last tutorials and our um our, our escape key. And now I added that if they click the Z key, that they add one to the counter. And basically what this means is when they click Z, we want it to draw a new bullet, right? So it basically creates a new bullet signature. So basically if if BX and BY were, if it was BX say 10, right? Then when we put one to counter, we want to draw a new bullet in BX11. Then when we click Z again, we draw a new bullet in BX12. Let me click it again, and we draw a new bullet in BX13, and so on and so forth. So we're just creating new bullets when we click counter. Now you, we never created the bullet yet, but you'll see in the next for loop. So in this for loop, I set it that i is equal to one, and I said the condition is i is less than or equal to counter. So let's go back to counter and remember counter is zero. So if you don't click Z at the beginning, it won't run because one is greater 
than greater than counter, right? So therefore, this for loop won't run. It only runs if it's less than or equal to. So if counter was equal to one, then this would loop once, and then you get what would happen. So once you click Z, counter is gonna go up by one. It's gonna increment by one. So since counter is zero, then when you click Z, counter is gonna equal to one. So when counter is equal to one, we go to this. We go. Um, we said int if I is equal is greater than or equal to counter then we run it so when we run this program we go to we go to the designated bullet so i is equal to one so we go to bx we go to bullet number one and we see we want bullet number one to increase by five and in this when we go to our drawing our circle we draw to our, our buffer and then we put we want to draw the bullet Right, the designated bullet. So in this case, bullets equal to one. So you want to draw bullet one, the x coordinate. We want to draw bullet one, the y coordinate. What we want to set its radius, and what color is going to be. And then every single time it loops to the program, that designated bullet will always increase by five, and that's what continues moving across the screen. So let's say counter is equal to two. No, let's say counter is equal to three. So counter is going to be equal to 3 right now. So it says while i is less than or equal to counter. So i is equal to 1. So it is less than or equal to. So it goes here and it's like i is equal to 1. So it goes to to bullet x1. We, it, um, we add 5 to bullet x to bullet, to bullet number 1. So for bullet number 1 we add 5 and then we draw to the screen. Then it goes back to the top, and it then i increments by one. So, and then so i therefore becomes two, and is two less than or equal to three? Yes, it is. So it goes here. It says bullet two. So I should add five to bullet two. Then I draw bullet two to the screen, right? Then it loops through again, and then it adds one to i. Then it goes to bullet three. Then it goes add 5 to bullet 3 and then we draw it to the screen so therefore it looks like an illusion of a drawing it looks like the bullets are continually moving but we're just drawing the three bullets at the designated portion of the screen each time it loops right each time the program loops it always go through this for loop and therefore it draws all the bullets we have active on the screen and then after we use our blit function to put it to the screen and we rest it and then we clear the buffer and then when we run our final program it looks something like this as we had before so when you click it like this and if you hold it down you get a whole bunch like that and then this is your program now this is not the best way to do it but it is one way to do it and I hope you learn from this tutorial if you really did not understand it then you can leave a comment or something but if you didn't understand it I suggest you go back to learning your arrays and stuff before you get into this tutorial so I hope this helped and thanks for watching and next tutorial is going to be on sound I look forward to that. Okay, thanks and bye.